There's no such thing as TMI on this channel. Am I doing it? But... Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you wanted to join me today. My name is Katie Mary and today we are going to talk about Zero Waste Essentials Toilet Edition. This is not going to be bathroom edition. I also have that video, but I thought it could be cool to talk specifically about the throne. I don't know why I'm being weird. Today's video is also sponsored. This video is sponsored by Cloud Paper. Cloud paper is completely tree free. It's made from bamboo. Their materials and packaging are all completely 100% plastic free. It's all FSC and SFI certified. I have actually made a video about bamboo and the impact of bamboo. So if you are more interested in some of the highlights of that video, I'll mention some of it now, but generally go and watch that video for the greater over you. One of the upsides to bamboo in contrast to trees is that a tree takes literally decades to grow big enough to be used in any kind of production. However, bamboo takes three years to mature. There's also the fact that bamboo don't actually need pesticides to grow. Then there's the downside of the quite unregulated field of bamboo throughout the entire world where often pesticides are used even though it's completely unnecessary but cloud paper bamboo toilet paper is actually also pesticide free which was something i was really happy to learn because i do have my guards up when it comes to bamboo the majority of bamboo is grown in china and that is also the case for the materials used for cloud paper however they use small family operated farms that are also responsible cloud paper is also using a carbon offsetting program to offset their transportation emissions and i was so happy to see that the carbon offsetter they are partnering with do not only plant symbolic trees. I have also made a video about the impact of carbon offsetting and specifically the greenwashing of the carbon offsetting industry because there are many many ways to carbon offset and one of the most popular ones is by planting trees and there are other ways of carbon offsetting that are much much more efficient like investing in green energy programs like investing in clean energy programs of renewable energy and stuff like that so and i was so happy to see that their carbon offsetting program also includes those things yeehaw thank you so much cloud paper for sponsoring this video i will actually get back into cloud paper and give you a review of the product itself but because this is a video about zero waste bathroom essentials in general we're also going to go over some of the other products and some of the other habits and practices that you can also do that is related to the throne that i think are equally important and can be used in combination and in addition to toilet paper the first one of which is bidets i made a post on instagram a while ago and i asked you guys if you had any questions about bidets and you had so many questions about bidets i think i want to i think i want to answer, i want to answer some of them now but of course i cannot answer all of them so i'm also going to write a blog post soon here's some of the highlights that i think are important to mention when it comes to bidets you can use a bidet as an addition to toilet paper so you use both things and you don't go completely toilet paper free i don't do that either because i just i, I, I oh it makes me feel uncomfortable and like being able to dab myself dry i just, this is not going to be TMI. There's no such thing as TMI on this channel. That is what I have learned. Thank you so much for being so open and understanding and cool. Um, but using a bidet will reduce the amount of toilet paper that you use with 50% on average. And that's definitely something to take into account. There are several different types of bidets. I have a handheld bidet that uses an external water source, uh, which can be water in a glass, but Generally, it's used for traveling, and that is the one that I use right now, which is, in your home, honestly, quite impractical. But that is just a, like, temporary solution until I get an actual bidet. Because the kind of bidet that I think is the most useful and the easiest to install, all of this stuff, is the one that is attached to your toilet seat and uses the same water source as the toilet itself. These types of bidets are also usually self-cleaning, which is really, really cool. And the type of bidet that I knew about or had sort of experienced before going into zero waste was the bidet where the bidet is a completely different compartment from the toilet. So you have basically two thrones, one for delivery and one for cleaning. That's so nicely put. But I think if you're completely new to the bidet game, it's a really cool idea to simply just have something you can attach to your toilet and then it just works. And they're also really, really easy to install, which I think is 
a giant plus. So there are different kinds of bidets and depending on your needs, there are different ones that might suit your needs the best. Then there's the notion of cleanliness and how much they clean, are they dirty? All of this stuff. Generally using a bidet is more hygienic than not using a bidet and there are plenty of sp places in the world where just a bidet is completely normal but I am from Denmark aka I am from the northern part of Europe where bidets have never really been a thing to my knowledge. Like I've never seen them in homes, hotels, anywhere. I've never seen them and because they're quite uncommon I know quite a lot of misconceptions like they are unclean but most bidets are self-cleaning and you clean them just like you clean the toilet. Whenever I talk to people about bidets who think they're gross for some reason, I don't know why, I always say, well, if you have poop on your arm, you wouldn't just wipe it off with a paper towel. You would wash your arm and it's sort of the same thing with your bum, I feel like. There are also lots of questions about the temperature of the water that you use. And again, this may differ depending on what kind of bidet that you want. You can get bidets where you can adjust the water temperature before spraying, which is really cool. The one that I have right now, I sort of can because I fill a jar of water and then that is the water in the jar that I then use to clean. So. I can, I, I can decide what, what temperature the water is. But there are also several types of bidets where you do not have that option, where it's room temperature. And that is also fine. Again, I think this is something that you sort of just get adjusted to. I think it's a habit that you have to get into and then it's honestly fine. Every time I've been on vacation in places where there were bidets, I always go home really bummed out. <laughs> pun intended, that I don't get to use the bidet anymore because I honestly really, really like it. I think it's great. <laughs> I wanted to say I like the feeling of being that kind of clean and I think it's a great addition to an already established toilet routine. But I think it sounded like I just enjoyed the sensation of the bidet, which is... Do I? There's nothing wrong with that, so... Okay, so let's talk more about toilet paper. I have used several different kinds of toilet paper within my zero waste days. The first thing that I did before sustainable toilet paper was this widespread as it is today. And like when I started zero waste, there were not really any brands available to me that I could use like Cloud or like the other brands that I've used before. So what I did was that I called up professional cleaning suppliers and I asked them to buy toilet paper from them. There's also a cleaning store in Olberg that is meant for professional cleaning agencies to go in there and buy their supplies. And they have these huge rolls of toilet paper, uh, like 10 kilos of toilet paper and they would always be wrapped in paper because they were meant like for schools and, you know, like institutions and stuff like that. And I would buy one of those and they were super, super cheap also because the toilet paper quality was, you know, like school quality toilet paper. But that was the first thing that I did to get zero waste, like plastic free toilet paper. <laughs> I want to show you some of the cloud toilet paper that I received and then I want to talk about what makes sustainable toilet paper sustainable. Okay, first of all, plastic free packaging, yo. Hello and welcome to Gita Mary's review of toilet paper. I'm so happy you could join me. First of all, the toilet paper is wrapped in paper, which is really nice. The paper is also recyclable. I think I got 28 rolls and the cool thing about Cloud is that you can sign up for a subscription. So they send toilet paper to your house every month, two months, three months, four months, and you will never ever run out. When looking for sustainable toilet paper, there are a couple of things that I look out for. There is stuff like BPA, which is something that you can add to materials, both metal and paper and if you have ever gotten a receipt from a store those are actually coded in bpa which makes them unrecyclable in a lot of cases which is not great so that is something that i look out for then i look for dyes bleach specifically chlorine bleach and fragrances cloud doesn't have any of that and i have used a couple of different brands of toilet paper that is sustainable that doesn't do that the different kinds of materials that i have had experiences with that are more sustainable than you know just conventional toilet paper includes bamboo it also includes recycled paper unbleached paper and sugarcane based paper all of which are really, really cool options. If you have a bidet, if you all, also if you don't, but I wouldn't really see how this would work without a bidet. 
but you can also make reusable toilet paper. I know this sounds to people who are perhaps new in the zero waste or sustainability community, this sounds insane. But if you have a bidet, you are pretty clean when you use your toilet paper. So instead of using paper that is disposable, you can also use cloth napkins and then throw them in the wash once you're done. This sounds, and I think the first time I heard about this, I thought this was super, super gross, but over time, I have mellowed out and sort of become more open to trying new things. And the times I've tried it, there's literally been no problem. No smell, no ickiness, no anything. Because you're clean when you've used the bidet. So, I also really want to add that into the mix. That you can also get reusable toilet paper. Or you can make it yourself. And it's a very pleasant experience. No need to judge. Some of the reasons why I also decided to try new types of paper, the first type of sustainable paper that I tried that wasn't just recycled paper, was sugarcane-based paper, where the fibers from the paper came from sugarcane production and the excess from sugarcane production. And then now bamboo toilet paper is because the paper production accounts for 20% of global deforestation. It is estimated that 40,000 trees are cut down daily to meet paper production demands. So perhaps it's a good idea to look at alternatives, like I don't know, maybe. The production of bamboo toilet paper also releases 30% less CO2 emissions. So that's also nice. I also wanted to add some things that I generally avoid within my toilet routine. I have an entire video called things I no longer buy, things I don't buy anymore, bathroom edition. So if you want to know plenty of stuff, there is that video. But here are some of the things that I think is really important in this context as well. First of all, I don't do air freshness. I just don't. I just let poops be poops. You can use different kinds of essential oil air fresheners that are more natural, but generally lots of them come in lots of packaging and I don't want that. I have had a couple of essential oil infused bamboo sticks in my bathroom for quite some time and they do definitely give the room like this nice mood. These sticks do not cover any other smells that may enter the room but I honestly also do not have a need for that so I just let hashtag let poops be poops. Then there's stuff like synthetic or glittery scrubs and soaps. I don't do that because they are usually just plastic and really I have no need. I make my own scrubs and I only use solid soaps that do not contain plastic or mica. I also have videos about the impact of those, like I have you completely covered. Can you feel that boo? Then there is wet wipes. I have this deep internal hatred towards wet wipes. I don't, uh, and if you use them, if you have like a specific need where you cannot find an alternative, I'm not judging you, I'm just saying that they do not enter my household. And I've never liked the feel of them, and I just, mm, I don't. I know you can get compostable ones, but I'm generally really skeptical towards that, because I have tried to compost wet wipes before, it just never worked out, and they never really biodegrade. Um, because they are mostly made out of cotton polyester blends, which means that they do not biodegrade. There are also different products, including wet wipes, that are advertised as flushable, but that doesn't actually mean anything because our septic systems are completely different, so there's really no way of telling whether or not that accounts for how your system and your pipes work, because it can be completely different. And I've read several articles saying that all of this flushable, non-toilet paper related stuff generally just bioaccumulate in the communal pipeline and clog up everything. So I would not recommend flushing anything down the toilet that is not poop, pee or paper. Some other really cool zero waste eco-friendly hacks that I think are really cool to include in your habits is first of all making your own cleaning agent. This also works when you want to clean your toilet. I've been using it for years and years and years and it works just fine. You can also make fizzy toilet taps that help you clean your toilet and I've been using those for ages as well. I have the recipe in my book which I just finished translating into English so hopefully we'll find a publisher soon so I can show you. Yay. I forgot to mention that I also have this bathroom bomb which came from Boobaloo. It comes in a tin box and it's really really easy to repurpose packaging wise. And yeah, I really really recommend this. This is just super super nice as well. And the kind of cloth that I use to clean my apartment and my bathroom and my toilet is cotton knitted cloths. I generally like to use natural materials for cleaning cloths because when you use synthetic like polyester microfiber cloths, every time you use them, they will release microplastic. 
and that's kind of unfortunate. So using a cotton material instead is just way better. And for hand washing, I use solid soaps. I've gotten a couple of questions about the hygienic values of solid soaps in contrast to liquid soaps but the facts are if you have a normally healthy functioning immune system and if you do it at home there's really nothing to worry about. I understand why institutions, schools, big work environments want liquid soap instead because lots and lots and lots of people are going to touch this solid piece of soap. In your house it's just a completely different situation, there are not as many people touching it and you can have a solid soap without any health concerns whatsoever. Um, but sometimes I also use a liquid soap if I see it in bulk. So if you really, really do need, if you have immune issues, for instance, if you really do need nothing else to touch the soap other than you, you can find them in bulk on glass bottles. Then I use thrifted or organic cotton towels, either or. Then in terms of how you clean your toilet, there's also the toilet brush question. I have a, a wooden toilet brush that I really, really like to use. I have inserted some images of it before I started using it. This is a really, really nice upgrade. It was a little bit more pricey than the plastic ones, but I also think the plastic ones, like the Ikea ones, for instance, they are less than a dollar. They're so, so cheap. And if you are on a really tight budget, I wouldn't necessarily go out and spend money uh, like 10 times more on something like this but if you have room in your budget and you really want to go all in on your zero weight toilet routine I do recommend it. It works amazingly. It's so cool. It can be composted. It can be upcycled. It's really nice. I used a bucket like this before I went zero waste because I used disposable menstrual products but <laughs> I don't use those anymore but we thought it would be a good idea to still have it because we do have friends over and we cannot really depend on them not throwing anything away. So this bin has been there for months at this point. There's basically nothing in it. But it's a good thing to have so we don't put our guests in an awkward position. So there's a bio bag in there that's made from cornstarch and uh, yeah. And that concludes everything that I wanted to talk about in terms of zero waste toilet habits and toilet routines. I hope that you liked this video. If you have any more super cool products, hacks, tips, stuff like that related to this topic, leave them down below and let's share. Let's share our throne. No. And thank you so much to Cloud Paper for sponsoring this video. I have put all the information down below. If you want to check it out yourself, I can really honestly recommend it. It's a super cool concept. So thank you so much for reaching out to me and sponsoring my video. And I, it, yeah, I just love getting new sustainable partners that not only benefit me and the planet, but also you. And I think it's cool. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're going to have an amazing day. Take really good care of yourselves and stay safe. Until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys helped me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!